Oh, wait. Welcome all of my friends, the Couch Pilots, the show that dares to fly into the unknown territory of awful television, Pilots of the Past. My name is the Black Balladeer, and across from me, as always, is the Couch Pilots Poet Laureate. It's Captain Philip Ressisher. Good evening. Romeo, Romeo, where art thou, Romeo? I'm over here! My name's Romeo! I'm over here! Thank God. I thought I lost you. Welcome back. I'm so glad I found you. Now that I found you, mm-hmm. I don't know what's the song. Now that I found you, don't know what to do. I don't know what that song is. You could say literally anything, and I'd have to believe it's the song. Chicken pussy. Chicken. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? We just said that the other day. What? Oh, was that the drunken lullabies? You know, if they don't call that episode chicken pussy, then it's a grave miscalculation on yeah. Dustin's part, and maybe another reason to bury the show altogether. Um, you always say welcome, all my friends, and, and like clockwork. And, and I have friends too, and I think a lot of them that listen feel left out. So why don't you take this opportunity to say hi to someone? Give a, a big shout out to Isabel in Memphis, Tennessee. Um, Jordan in the country of Jordan, spelled differently, of course. Oddly, and um, Ted who is in prison right now, but he is at Rikers Island, so I want to give him a big shout-out, too. That's in New York, right? That's like a tough prison, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's a tough prison. How do you know? Is Todd or Ted? Ted. How do you know Ted? He listens to the show. Oh, you know, just from listening to the show? Oh, yeah. yeah. I wish I was friends with him. Can I be friends with him? Mm, I, I think you can only write three people a month, so I don't know. That's fine. I understand if I'm not on the short list. We just met. Chicken pussy. <laughs> um... Today is uh, it's pretty good. You know, it's the middle of summer. Dog days of summer, am yeah. I right? Arr! I'll just leave it. I'll just let you go. Arr! Howling at the Moon. I'm wearing a Hank Williams t-shirt, and he has a song called Howling at the Moon. I know it's a shirt. I don't know his catalog well enough to appreciate that. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, he didn't know that. What's this, What's the song about? Probably like... a. A lady. Yeah, just a, a, a guy prowling looking for Boontane. All the songs that ever existed for adults, what percentage is about love? 13. No way. No way. What's the, what's the, what's the thing that... You ever heard that, the band Shy? There's all about love with two fingers. hey Nice. Um, I think it's like 95%. Don't you think? 95% of all songs geared for not children are about love? Well, I think you would think that. But then if you dive deep into them, they're about sex. So it puts the actual love. I, okay. I mean, what you, what, you, what you consider love and what I consider love have all, has always been two different what things. What if I just said women? Okay, well, okay for, for, forget 93% that. 93% women. What? 93, I'm, I'm 93% water. Are you really? What is our definitions of love, you and I? Um, my definition of love is a commitment to another person, a, a sacrificing for the one you, <laughs> you care most for, uh, listening and, and lying when you have to, to, to make them happy. Mm-hmm. And for you, it's all about that full size bed, baby. Bada bing, bada bang, real sky in the room. How you doing? <laughs> He's not wrong. He's not wrong. <laughs> oh my God. You nailed it. I'd write a song about that. Um, my full size bed. Mm, 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 my full mm, size bed. Mm, 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 Your head will be at all corners of my full size bed. <laughs> you think I can't get you underneath it, but baby, let me tell you something. When I get you all wet, I'll lube you right underneath that frame in my full size bed. Bum ba to bum ba ba bum a full size bed. Bum ba ba bum ba ba bum. To me, my CDs are more important than your comfort in my full size bed. I got a lot to CDs, and they mean more to me than you. So when you're banging your head up against the wall, remember, baby, 
Depeche Mode. I got their whole catalog <laughs> next to my full size bed. <laughs> uh, uh, I got the whole catalog next to my full size bed. Do, 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 do. You ask me why I only have two pillows, and there's one reason and one reason only. Because I don't want you sleeping next to me. There's a couch. Go, 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 sleep on it. Actually, best if you just leave. Just go ahead and go home. I know it's three in the morning, but I got to get my rest tonight. I'm going to listen to some Depeche Mode because I have a full-size, full-size bed. Full-size, full-size, full-size bed. I could have kept going, but then you looked mad. You know, for a song with no hook, it's not bad. Well, I didn't get to the hook. You did all that. That was the first verse. The, that, that was, was the, the first fir- verse. Keep going. Are you getting to the? Are you close? How close are you to the hook? <laughs> About ten minutes away. Hmm. Because How, then there's then there's a Patreon a, supporters. Listen up. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Was that a fly? Oh yeah. Uh, you have the paper towels in here still? Oh yeah. Oh, they're in the other room. Could someone go get them? Maybe. Or, or they're right there. Uh, take, give me the paper towels. Um, did you not like that song? No, I really liked it a lot, actually. Um, I feel like it was almost tailor-made for me. Well, that's that's what I... When I wrote it, that's what... <laughs> when I wrote it, that's what I was thinking about was you. I don't have a full-size bed. You want to hear my so- song about my bed? Uh, yeah, go ahead. I got a king-size bed, and I still have no room, because the doggy is all over the place. And I don't mean doggy style, because I never see my wife's face. I got a king size bed and a naked doggy. She's snoring all night long. Doggies don't wear clothes. And then I'll go into the room and I'll sleep alone. I love it when my wife is mad at me because I get that whole goddamn bed. I love it when my wife is mad at me because she sleeps in the room instead of laying next to me. Laying next to me. <laughs> I love that one. Oh, I love all the words and the hook, which the, I didn't get to. The hook, which is undoubtedly ten minutes away. <laughs> Look, um, enough fucking around, okay? Songs are about. Is the fly dead? Yeah, I killed the fly. Shoe fly, don't bother me. Songs are about sex, about love, and about drugs. I think. Yeah. <laughs> um, something something else that's kind of about sex, love, and drugs is our tarmac worker. His name is Down Syndrome John. We call him DSJ, and he's been sure. with us almost since the very beginning. I, I would go back, and I would say episode two or three, he, he, he popped his head out. Yeah. Um, he's had so many misadventures over the years, and one of them recently is coming back from hedonism with a Chinaman wife. Yeah, Fook Me. Hey, uh, Fook... Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, her name yes, is Fook yes, Me. Yeah. Beautiful woman, uh, legs to die for. They go up to her neck, practically. Oh. It's almost like an alien or something. Ooh. You remember MASH, how they had the weird uh, fingers? 4077. Mm-hmm. The very same. Well, um, we, I recently... Can about, you make yourself comfortable? Good Lord. How do you deal with that fidgeting all the time? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll, I'll try to get comfortable. Oh, uh, you got a uh, a couple months ago. We were talking about how I I walked in mm-hmm. trying to conserve energy by turning a light off in a closet, and I I touched a uh, I touched a person. Sure, and it looked like Anne, DSJ's baby mama, right. wearing a Fook Me outfit. You remember that? Yeah, and I was like, what? 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 We haven't addressed it much, and honestly, there wasn't much to address since then. We're kind of doing our own PI work, you know, yeah. just, just seeing if we could figure it out for ourselves. I I, I, uh, I thought we'd get right right down to it, though. Um, how do you plan on doing that? By bringing Anne onto this plane and, and really kind of cornering her. Oh, okay. I guess here she, can... Hold on, here she is. Come, come in here. Come in here from out there. Come in here from out there. <coughs> I'm in here from out there. Why are you coughing? You're not bringing the SARS into the uh, cockpit. Was... You're not bringing SARS into the cockpit, are you? You were coughing when you... SARS is an Asian I- no. ailment. Thank you. Do you have uh... No, I'm not as stupid as I look. I don't know what you're talking about. Despite that haircut, he's not stupid. <laughs> this is the best hair day I've had since I got my haircut. No, you're right. It looks good. Come on, fleek. It looks good. You're fleeking out. <laughs> fleek you. You missed it yesterday. I did fleek out. <laughs> did you? Oh, what's that mean? Oh, I had an emotional breakdown. Oh, God. God, it was... It At was... work? No. Bowling alley? I, I don't work, work on Sundays. 
No, in the garage. Anyway, we're not we're not here to talk about me and my depression. No, no we're not. We're yeah, here to talk about. Jason said you guys need to talk about something. Well, I think first of all we want to say how is DSJJR you and uh, Down syndrome John's baby? He's good. Um, he's getting big, right? Yeah, he's his uh, head is huge. He's a year or so. He now. looks like a Pez dispenser. His head's so big. <laughs> what do you mean a year It'll or so? Up. It'll catch up with him. Eventually. You don't know when your own baby was born. It's all a blur sometimes. I hear, I hear that drug use or no just pain. The just pain getting older. DSJ is getting old. DSJJR yeah. is getting older. His body will fill out with the rest of his head eventually. This man, wow! Do you know how old DSJ is by chance? We never, we yeah, had never, we've never known. I think he's like in his thirties. Thirty fives. I think he's like thirty six. She could say seven. She could say thirty seven. I'm. Uh, he's twenty two, or she could say he's forty eight, and I would believe uh, yeah, either no, way. No, yeah, yeah. I have no we're idea. Gonna say, we're gonna say thirty seven. Is that what we're gonna we're lock gonna stick down? with that? All right. The only way to really tell is to like cut off one of his limbs and count the rings. Right. I think at this point, but I'm not ready to do that. No. But he. I think eventually he'll just walk into one of our propellers on the plane, <laughs> and they'll it'll take care of itself. I think so too. But um, that's great. We want to get a little um, little uh, update on DSJJR and also couch. So is he? Is he? He's walking then, right? Yeah, he's uh, said his first word, which was uh, golden cones. But it came out. That's two words. But... Good do- goodness. <laughs> sounds Asian. It's Asian. That sounds Asian, Asian to me. Asian. Okay. Okay. I wish I could hear her say that again. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I can't do it again. You have to hear him say. I'll record it sometime. Oh, that'd call be great. A voicemail. That's great. Hey. Uh, um, I mean, and your guys' relationship, I know, it, you know... Uh, They're not you, together. Well, no, they're no. not together, but they still have a relationship because they have a child. How is, like, the handoffs every other weekend and stuff, how how, how is the... I mean, is there good communication? I've been like, letting him have them about every weekend. Sure. That's pretty good. He'll pick them up promptly 2 p.m. Fridays and right. then drop them off promptly 2 p.m. Mondays. Mm. So what do you do when you have During time the weekend? Away? Yeah. Dancers. Um, Are you still dancing? Yeah. Yeah. I'm still doing a little bit pole dancing. How's that um, going? I'm working on my routine for CouchCon. Right. Yeah. We're, we're got to come up with something to show everybody. Yeah. I'm thinking about maybe strip water aerobics along with it. You know, put the pole in the water. Wow, that's going to cost us a lot more of More exercise. Yeah, it, you, you it know, works out the body more that way. We're, we're going to have to have like cameras like under the water so people can see it. Right, and just, just the logistics oh, the, of the, the take pool's alone. clear. It's a clear pool. Like, people can just watch. I mean, <laughs> I mean, who's paying for that, though, right? <laughs> like, you want to do this again at the Ramada like we did in Folsom last year. Right. They have a pool there. I, mean, I understand this is a Madison Square Garden and you want to go all, all out. I mm-hmm. completely understand, but we also have a cage match we have to get ready for. Um, Bill Cosby mm-hmm. has a big, huge writer and stuff. So yeah, let's. Just, I mean, w- focus on the technique, not so much the presentation. Yeah, check the technique okay. first, please. I'm working on that every weekend. Earlier, you you said what uh, DSJJR's uh, first words were, mm-hmm. and it kind of sounded Asian sure. to me. Do you know? Uh, you know, Fook me, right? A DSJ's. You know, it's weird. I've, I've never met her. Never um, seen her. No, you've never. He does. She doesn't come with him to pick DSJJR up. No. Well, mm-hmm. um, I you, think she you, doesn't want to be around my kid. Did Did you know that they were married? That they got married? I had no idea. Oh, this is a shocker for you. You seem so calm. I saw her outside on the way in here earlier. Oh, you saw her on the way in here? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then uh, I went into the, and then I came out of the bathroom, and there Anne was ready to come in here like I had asked her. And would you be able to... How um, do you get clearance to get in here? Because technically, she does not employed by us. She wasn't in the lounge. She wasn't, oh. in, the, she wasn't in the... Okay, oh. okay, all right, <laughs> okay. come on. She wasn't in the captain's okay. lounge. Okay, all right, all right. And would you be able to run outside real quick and get Fook me and bring her in here? I never saw her coming in here. Well, I did. Can you go get her real quick? Go get her? Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. All right, there she goes. So uh, this will be interesting. This, I think. I think this is our way of... Nipping it in the bud. Yeah, let's nip it in the bud. All right, we're sniffing it out like a like a like a greyhound dog. Mm-hmm. Because they're really good hunters. Yeah, those greyhounds are great hunters, and they transport a lot of people in their buses. Okay, here comes uh, <laughs> here, here comes uh, here comes Fook oh, me. Oh yes, you can. Here comes Fook me. Uh, hey, Fook me. I, we've never had you on the show proper before. How are you? Oh, you know, I'm a, I'm a fine. You are fine, F I N E. Oh, that's come on. That's, oh, that's, a, that's so sweet of you. Your, your legs are popping. Yeah, they're, they're popping. Oh, thank you. This is a. Thank you. This is DSJ's betrothed. Okay, you can't say that. Well, you know. Is it legal? I mean, you guys got married at. at Hedonism. Um, hedonism. Is, right. it, is it legal? Because that's in Jamaica, right? It's in international waters. Right, so is the 
the the marriage legal here? Well, um, remember uh, they uh, I, I remember they had to hire an inter- or a sign language person because you know how DSJ's mom is uh, she's deaf. Yeah. They had to do that at, or was it blind, or was it both? <laughs> Helen Keller, right? Wasn't she? Uh, her name is Helen. Well, and, and things have gone downhill for her. So her name she is might... Helen Syndrome. We, uh, I know she was at the courthouse, and uh, so I think they got married at the courthouse when they got back. In, oh, okay, okay. So they made it legal. They mm-hmm. did it there in international waters. The ceremony was there. Yeah. Or is that right? Is that how it went? Fuck me. Yeah. You, yeah. Tell us about this, the uh, marriage Cer- ceremony, ceremony with DSJ at hedonism, and your voice. It, uh, it was a uh, very beautiful. <laughs> you seem so happy. Yeah, I've never seen a woman. Happy, so happy. happy time life. Yeah, yeah. I feel like we just cracked up with a fortune cookie, didn't we? So uh, that's good news. Now, uh, a couple months ago, I don't know. And I, I know I already apologized to you, but I remember I, I went and I turned off the light in the hallway closet. And uh, I accidentally touched you, and because uh, I didn't know anyone was there, I was just trying to turn off the light. You remember that? I was busy. Yes. Okay. Busy. You were busy. Yeah. What were you doing there? You were so busy in there. You seem to be like almost. Oh, well, I think she was probably change, changing mop heads. Mm-hmm. I think she was changing the. Mop oh, were you changing heads. the mop heads? Yes. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> well, when I when I saw you in there, it looked like you were. Uh, like you were naked, but you weren't naked. Like you were taking something off. I wish I could see you naked. Actually, you know what? This might be a good opportunity. Can you can you run outside real quick and grab Anne? She did she you, she just brought you in here, right? You could say that. Okay. Would you would you go outside and grab Anne real quick? And let's bring her back in here real fast. Okay. Bye. All right. That this we're gonna wear her down here. This, what, who, what are we? We're, so we think that Anne is Fukmi in a in a Fukmi suit. Yeah, yeah, I think she's taking. This is like Mrs. Doubtfire. You remember that when he's with his family? Hello, hello, <laughs> Hoven and I is Doubtfire. Uh, uh, <clears throat> they were they were Mrs. Doubtfire played by Robin Williams. Yeah, I saw that movie. He was at. Oh, did you now? Put that on the list for those keeping track at home. Um. He went to the restaurant. Gonna watch it on Drunk of the Movies. <laughs> they were like, he was with his family, and then he was also having a business meeting at the same time. Right. And so he had to go back and forth as Mrs. Doubtfire and himself. Anne. And eventually, she, okay, okay, here she comes. Anne. Yeah, yes. Hey, Anne. Welcome hey. back. Thank you for grabbing Fook Media. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. She, she's you, a little shy. You recognize her and never have met her before, but you coaxed her to come in here. Mm-hmm. And so we have both of them on the plane at this time. We have not taken off yet, thank God. Well, the one's outside the cockpit. We don't. We can't. I mean, they're not well, both. We mean. can't fit them all in here. Right. There's not enough room. She's watching the baby for me. That's awfully nice of her. Mm-hmm. She, she's a she's a good stepmom, right? She's all right. Mm-hmm. What do you What do you think? Um, does she has the paternal instincts? Yeah. Does she have that? Does she have the paternal instinct? <laughs> the paternal instinct. Yeah. <laughs> Just answer the question, Ann. I mean, it kicks in. Yeah, I feel like she does great with uh, with. I'm gonna call him Junior. Sometimes. DSJ JR. Yeah, DSJ JR. Junior. Okay. All right. Well, um, uh, he seems quick. to know her really well, which is very odd. It's well, here, like there's something uh, similar. Here's a similar question I have. I tried to kind of, I tried to kind of peel the onion uh, a little while ago when you were here. Mm-hmm. Um, so you and DSJ mm-hmm. um, were never married. No. And you had a kid together. Yes. Um, I, I don't. I don't think we've ever talked about it, but I don't think you're currently in a, a different relationship. Uh, do you still have feelings for mm. DSJ? Um, no, we're just he's just he's a good dad to the mm-hmm. baby, so I keep him around because of that. You keep don't want to scar the baby. Yeah. Okay. Mm. You don't want to scar the baby. I gotta have my weekends open too. Sure, because you have to work. Yeah. For whoring. Huh? For uh, dancing. <clears throat> yeah, cinnamon. Oh, that's right. S-I-N. It's a cinnamon. Cinnamon. Spelled mm-hmm. cinnamon. Mm-hmm. S-I-N. With, with an S-I-N. Yeah. All right. Well, um... So he helps me out So there. do you work besides that, or that's you just work on the weekends, and you have enough to live off of? I have a day job. Which is what? <laughs> I, uh... The glaring at is, people? <laughs> I, I know her family had a taxidermy business. Is, is, are you involved with that? No. Okay. No. All right. Well, I don't know. I'm trying. I, I really... I think Fook me. It was. It was. I don't know. We we never had her on the on the mic, but we really didn't get to spend a lot of time with her because you like called. 
Oh, yeah, Maybe I didn't think about that. Maybe, should we go have her, and would you mind grabbing Fook me real quick? Just go, uh, go outside. The, I mean, they're obvi- I, I, I haven't seen them both together at the same time, but sure. one leaves and the other comes in, right. so it's two different people. Can you, any, can you like do the exchange real quick? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go out there. Yeah, we'll I'll be back. I'll yeah. be back in a second. I'll go get her. Okay. What are we gonna, how are we going to do this? How are we going to get her to, to admit? I think we should both start pulling on each side of her hair. Let's start pulling her hair when she comes in? Yeah. All right. You, you, That's what you do. When she comes in, you can ask her a question to kind okay. of get a false sense of security. And then we <laughs> both start pulling her hair. That sounds great. All right. Oh, 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 oh. oh. Okay. Hey. Fook me. How are you? Oh, hello. Hey. Um, hello. You have beautiful hair. Um, wow. it's, it's a little different than Anne's hair. And Three, two, one. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my God. I knew it. I knew what? it. Guys, I'm sorry. You, you I'm sorry. This is crazy. I, that's what I thought. Didn't I tell you? You are dressing up as Fook Me. There is no Fook Me. Anne, There's not. Anne is Fook Me. It's been me the whole time. Well, fuck me. And fuck this me, is Doubt Fired, me. you guys. Fuck me, right? Fuck me, Fook Me. So, I did once. I thought it was your baby, but it was... That was a Jake. long time ago, yeah. and now you got some splaining to do, you, just like you, Ricky Ricardo once said. So what, 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 what's with this ruse? I mean, and first of all, how do you get the legs to look like that in that costume? Mm-hmm. It's, it's all spandex and latex. The redistribution Lacquer. of mass. <laughs> <laughs> That's why Ant's boobs are so much different size than Pookie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I took a girdle. Uh, it's the, the technology the behind that suit really tips. is quite impressive. <laughs> why? Why are you doing this? Yeah, I mean, why simple, are you, let's just th- cut to the chase. Yeah. Why are you doing this? I just wanted to be be closer to closer us, to everyone. I gotta. Sometimes I have my suspicions about what DSJ is up to on uh, on the the days during the week because I was thinking about maybe letting him have the baby more often. But uh, I want to see his work life. You know, I want to keep keep an eye on him, make sure he's doing okay. At I don't work. understand it. Uh, he, life enough to be able to have the baby a little more because he's been asking to to see him during the week go go get some ice cream or go to the park and uh i gotta make sure he's uh Cap- adulting captain what do you think about this i think she's lying to us i think i mean anybody can contact the show right anybody mm-hmm. we have a voicemail we have social media. Right. If she wanted to keep tabs, she could have just could have just listened. And you know what? There's a baby involved here. Okay. There yeah, is. What, a, who's yeah. watching DSJR when you're acting like Fook Me in, in in disguise? Yeah. DSJ's mom. Helen. Helen, Helen Syndrome. Helen Syndrome is watching him. She can't see or hear. Why would you leave a baby who can now walk? With a woman named Helen Syndrome, who is obviously blind and deaf, and dated Harrison Ford. Harrison Ford. She knows the baby's there. How? I just kind of set him in her lap and leave. She's fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's in the same spot when I come back. And they uh, both shit their pants. Good lord, man. good lord. So, but you can come talk to us anytime. Yeah, you, know, you don't. You don't like, have to do. This is a. This is a very. So you were down in hedonism. Dressed as another woman, as an Asian woman, as an Asian woman, and then you married. D- so technically, it's the only way I could get get close enough to get in here to to try to see. How I don't he's think doing. so. I don't think it was necessary. I, I think this was. I uh, think if you yeah. just say DSJ, I, I want to spend more time with you and the pilots. You could have just said that. I've never heard him say one ill word about you. So it's not like he's around. He's he's got hard feelings or is trashing you behind your back. I think all of us are very reasonable, logical, pragmatic, approachable people that will give you access to your child if you need it. Yeah, and I'm a very access lo- to my own child if I need it. Yeah, on on the times that it's, <laughs> it's scheduled, court ordered for DSJ to have the child, and you want to be close. He, I think he's more than willing to have you involved. Yeah, I don't you know why I have could, to dress up could, like a Chinaman. Yeah, you guys could go to the park together or go yeah. get ice cream together. Mm-hmm. My problem is the thing that I'm kind of uh, furious about <sighs> is the fact that this whole time I've wanted to fuck Fook me, and it's just a costume. Oh, hold on, I got an idea for that. I have the costume. Yeah, still, yeah, yeah. What do you? Uh... If you want it, I mean, so, it's yeah, in you, the, uh, it's yeah, in the yeah, yeah, you're totally busted. Uh, you better surrender that costume over to us now that you have been busted. It's in the closet. The All same right. one that you mm-hmm. touched. So he touched t- my. He, did he touch Fook me or did he touch touch? Oh yeah, which which oh, the, flesh did I touch? Cinnamon. Oh, the costume was halfway off. It was mine. Okay. Uh, which part of the body? It was my asshole. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really low light switch. 
we had a. Uh... Did you smell your finger? Every time I turn off a light, I always smell my finger. I think you know what, man. I know that about you. I respect that about you. I didn't even think to do it for myself. In the future, I definitely will. I knew the flush felt odd. It was a sphincter. <laughs> this is a very tight switch. I think we're on a tight schedule. I, uh, I and, and you know that said, Anne, obviously we're disappointed in your behavior. Um, honesty is the best policy, in my opinion. It's honesty it, honesty I mean, is next to godliness. That's why we've had such good relationship. Is we're always honest with each right. other. That's exactly you guys right. are just you know super so busy. And super yeah, famous. super famous. You got so many, got so cool many haircuts. listeners. You got so many people who call. Whose haircuts in. cooler, mine or his? Yeah, whose who's haircuts cooler? It's probably his. You have like a like you got some hair gel going on in there. You gave it a little on. extra. A little extra floof. A little extra floof. Yeah. I didn't ask you how did I prepare no, it. I no, no, I said, no. That's her answer. Which is better. That's her, that's her very Because she doesn't want to hurt our feelings. No, no. You know what? She says that you have the better haircut. I can read between the lines. Okay. And you know what? I respect that and I honor you. Ooh. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, so this is what I'll say, Anne. Um, as long as you promise to come clean to DSJ in your own time. Not on the show. We don't have time for that. Of course. And, and, I, and you must leave the costume behind. We'll dispose of it properly. We'll fuck it later. Fuck yeah, and then uh, you, and we'll still allow you to Do you perform. want me to put it on and you fuck it? <laughs> or do you want to do it <laughs> like, like individually? Because <laughs> we didn't think about that. Somebody's got to get in the costume. Uh, I, I also have another know, confession. Man. I don't think we have to wear it to fuck it. <laughs> Um, I fucked a watermelon before. No one was wearing that shit. I think I, I also have to tell you I set up cameras. So if you guys do that, please let me know so I can sell the videos. No, online. you don't get that. Okay, you've you've uh, surrendered your Only rights. our Patreon supporters yeah. can get that. I just oh, yeah. didn't know how to approach you guys. Well, go to patreon.com backslash couch pilots to sign up for the premium subscription. And you can watch us fuck each other wearing an Asian outfit. <laughs> now be gone with you. We'll see you at CouchCon. Make sure to be there. Well, we have to. Yeah, we. Yeah. Say, I mean, it's. About I mean, us. I'm talking about the fans. Be <laughs> oh, there. Get uh, some body but butters. Join my class. It's a. Ca- it's a con about us. Of course, we're going to be there, Ian. <laughs> what are we, Nelly? <laughs> yeah, what are we, Nelly? This is a very embarrassing moment. Hit the road, lady. Day. Ladies and gentlemen, the captains have turned on the fastened seatbelt Choose life, choose a job, choose a career, choose a family, choose a fucking big television, choose washing machines, cars, compact disc players, and electric tin openers. Choose good health, low cholesterol, and dental insurance. Choose fixed interest mortgage repayments. Choose a starter home, choose your friends, choose leisure wear and matching luggage. Choose a three-piece suit on higher purchase and a range of fucking fabrics. Choose DIY and wondering who the fuck you are on Sunday morning. Choose sitting on a couch and watching mind-numbing, spirit-crushing game shows, stuffing junk food into your fucking mouth. Choose rotting away at the end of all, pissing your last in a miserable home, nothing more than embarrassment to the selfish, fucked-up brats you spawn to replace yourselves. Choose your future. Choose life. But why would I want to do something like that? I chose not to choose life. I chose something else. And the reasons? There are no reasons. Who needs reasons when you've got heroin? Highlander. There can only be, there can only be one. Right. I loved it. That was a good job. There can only be one of those. And at first, I thought it was it. Sean Connery at a young age. Back when he was Sheen. Sean Sheen. Sheen Connery. Sheen Sean Sheen Chang. Sheen Shang Shang. Sheen Chong bitches. Today, we discuss the pilot episode of the Lewis Lectures from the year of our Lord, 2000. Add only to great year. Oh, <laughs> yeah. 2002, baby. Oh, man. I remember it just like it was 16 years ago because it was. Yeah, and you could, uh, you know what I remember? What? Is if you wrote it backwards, mm-hmm. it was still the same year. Ambidextrous. I five that shit. Ha-chee! What are some of the highlights of 2002 besides it being ambidextrous? Same as forward as it is backwards. Um, we have to think about 2002 because we're so far removed from that time period. 16 years. Yeah, exactly. That's a great number. And we cannot properly judge the Lewis lectures if we don't take ourselves back there in our minds. minds. So we talk about things that happened in 2002, including from August 1st, the 35th uh, annual San Diego Comic-Con International opens at San Diego Convention Center. Okay, nerds. Nerds get together. That, I think that's like between that and maybe New York. Those are the biggest ones. Those are the biggest and OGs. Yeah, OGs. If any desire to go to a comic, no, not at all. I would, I would be totally annoyed. I would, I would, I would be annoyed just yeah. standing in the line to go in. 
Okay, so Comic Con is. I mean, there's going to be some cute girls in like little cosplay outfits that are really small. Yeah, and and you know, but there's too many people. Mm -hmm. Nothing I want to. I just want to see a couple of three or four girls in like the little Sailor Moon outfits. Maybe accidentally touch their buttholes when you're hitting a light switch. Thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. Uh, Okay, so Couch Con is like, hey. Uh, comic it's different. books, it's uh, movies, kind of this... CouchCon is? No, I'm sorry, San Diego. Okay, uh, thank you. Comic-Con, Comic-Con, I apologize. Thank you. But it's like all this kind of media nerd culture, that's what it is. Right. What kind of con would you be interested in? Is this like like PinCon? BowlingCon? BowlingCon? LameCon? Just BowlingCon. How about... Bow- <laughs> Jesus Christ. I thought we told you to beat it, Ann. <laughs> when she said beat it, she's like, I gotta come in and... What is going on here? I've never seen a half naked person. Is that good right there? <laughs> is that good or not? Please explain what's going on here. Uh, uh, Anne is half naked and she's. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff that just went on here. Yeah, I just put her. Uh, Pardon my boner. I think she. I think she. <laughs> I think she's jumping in the uh, the hot tub and the, oh, okay. the captain's, which I don't. I did not give her permission to do. Why would you wear? Why would you buy an outfit that you have to have somebody else help you put it on? I mean, talk to DSJ, right? Right. Um, Where were we? I was just curious, like if there's anything bowling, bowling con. Is that something you'd be interested in? Oh, definitely. Really? They, every, Come on. Every year they have a um, uh, they have a convention, which is a con for short. Uh, a bo- in Vegas, a bowling manufacturing mm-hmm. and stuff. I would love to go there. Okay, that, that no offense. It seems a little nerdy to me. <clears throat> I don't. Oh, I don't, you, so I want to. I want to go buy action figures and comic books. I wouldn't. I don't think I'd want to go to that one either. I agree <clears throat> with what you're saying. That'd be really annoying, and it'd just be maximum. I love Greece. Do you remember the musical Greece? Yep. Greece is the word. Greece is the word. Can you get me a beer, please? I was. I was just unfolding can, my can legs. You get, can you get me a beer? <laughs> I didn't know if you heard. Um, so, if I went to a con, I would probably go to, like, a DD con. What do you think about that? DD con? Yeah. I'd love it. And I could bring DD from Australia, and then meet DD con from, uh, from Greece. I think she played Rizzo. You remember DD con? Greece is the bad, is the bad, the thing is. That joke is great and probably <clears throat> fell on deaf ears. Uh, that's fine. August 10th, Academy Award winner Nicolas Cage, age 38, with Princess of Rock and Roll, Lisa Marie Presley, age 34, at the Moana Lani Bay Hotel on the Big Island of Hawaii. But why? Why did they get married? They didn't stay very married very long, right? Nicholas Cage is a big fucking tool, right? Um, uh, no. No, he's a horrible actor. Horrible actor. I don't know, man. I think... I think at this point, 2018, the stage of Nicholas careers or N- Nicholas career, Nicholas, Nicholas Cage's career is, I have, um, I've taken all the money and the fame that I have accumulated in the uh, the 90s and early 2000s, all that money, and I've blown it on things. Sure. And so now I'm putting out five movies a year, one of which may go to theater, um, and to try to recoup my loss of my so, but spending. He, but what he's saying is, I'm being artsy, right? Oh, as far as explaining why he's doing these direct to thing, right? Yeah, probably so. He yeah. probably thought, yeah, I love the independent. There was a spirit. vampire one. There was a vampire where he's a vampire. I'm not joking. There are so many shit movies of his you've probably never even heard of. Neither have I. That you go in this IMDb and you're like, what the fuck is this? It's like, oh, it's a video on demand. Yeah. You know, I think I think he's done some really good stuff. Okay, leaving Las Vegas. Oh yeah, that was good. I did see that. That's okay. Um, adaptation. No, that was a good one. Never saw. That's a really good. One. You should check that one out. The one where uh, uh, born in Phoenix. Uh, Born in uh, Arizona, raising Arizona. Yeah, I never saw it. There's a movie he did with John Travolta where he, they he, um they cut their uh, faces and then they switched faces. I can't remember what it was called. Those. Face off? No, I don't think that was it. It's um one of one of them was a good guy, one was a bad guy, and they said you guys have to switch uh, identities. So they cut one of the faces. Identity crisis. Uh, I that that sounds more closer. What was the other one you said before that? Face off. Identity crisis, I think, is it. Okay. That sounds more like... But yeah, they switched... Basically, they took the face and removed it. It might have been face remove. I can't remember. Oh, the face of a name. Mm-hmm. Okay. The mask. Oh, mask. Mask. Ma- oh, yes. Is that Eric Stoltz? And- yeah, that's that's what it was. He was the good guy. Yeah, he played uh, Rocky Dennis, the uh, the kid with the cement face. Look, uh, I think... I think 
he's kind of a crazy person who loved Elvis. He's like, maybe, what if I just get to fuck Elvis's daughter for 10 years? And right. then he did it. Well, hey, more power to him. Um, 20, August 29th, 19th annual MTV Video Music Awards. Um, the winners in the male and the female uh, artist, con- uh, whatever, Eminem and Pink. Slim Shady. Mm-hmm. Walking around like Jam Brady. Um, Eminem was good at one time. Is he not good anymore? I don't think he is good anymore. What? I don't think he's do. He's not good anymore. He's just like he doesn't have anything to whine about anymore. You know what I mean? Or, and when he does still whine about the same stuff, you're like, I've heard you whine about this for ten years. I think at this point, when you have like ten mansions and all the money in the world and all the drugs and the women, like what do you? What can you rap about? You know, I mean, I th- artists are good at the beginning of their career because they're struggling. They're trying to make it. They're hitting the pavement. Eminem has nothing to prove. Sure. He has everything in his pocket. What else is there? I mean, he's an excellent rapper. But they, yeah, he's ex- But they shouldn't, should, like, there's probably people that are hating on him. Shouldn't he, like, do a diss track that's good? I don't know. Yeah, I, w- I would listen to it. I it's like Eminem. Kanye, Banye, yeah. with your mama Sanye, Donye, <laughs> Wanye, I'm Kanye. <laughs> that's, that's about it. Well, with with that well, he says impromptu, a lot faster. With that impromptu rap, I am safely <clears throat> and securely back in two thousand and two. I'm ready to go. Two thousand two. Um, I was twenty one. Uh, I was twenty seven, nice. and I went to heaven in the bedroom <laughs> like all day <clears throat> and <clears throat> all of the <throat> night. Why do we choose to watch the Lewis Lectures? Uh, there's four simple criteria. We were we were, we were right on the edge one, of two, three, four. <clears throat> season 14 uh, about over here. But uh, number one for season 14, the pillar has been constructed. It had to be an animated mm. show. Cartoons. Yeah. We had to throw that tarp over everything. Sure. That, that entire picnic table, we had to throw. throw right. Cartoon first. That now, now we set the table. Now we set the table. Uh, two, uh, had to be one and done. Never went to series. Whether it aired or not is, say it with me, listeners, an Irrelevant. elephant. Ir- um, shit. Damn it. Sorry. You mean rewind? V- 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 yep. Uh, whether it aired or not is. Say it with us. Irrelevant. Say it, irrelevant. Say it. Irrelevant. Irrelevant. Um, number three, we had to find it on the interwebs. And number four, it had to be free, baby. Free baby. You say baby too? You can find the entire episode of the Lewis Lectures by... Subscribing to Couch Pilots and Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcast app of choice, and then simply click on one of our classic little links in our show. <coughs> or go, go to YouTube, YouTube and, and you know, know what, what to do, do too. But... Uh, flight attendants, uh, prepare for takeoff, please. Looks like uh, looks like DSJ and Ann are having a little bit of a confrontation outside there. They're they're up in each other's faces. They're both smiling, <sighs> but the, the, their hand movements and their body language doesn't reflect what we see on their faces. And and, and I maybe her thing in my jigger came off that you tied up. Or maybe he saw that you tied it up. Maybe he was looking through the looking up into the cockpit and he saw you tying her her top. We won't know until we land, I suppose. I would like to think we could just fire him, right? We could you, guy, you know right? what we could do? We could we could do a clean slate, fire fire the bag boy. Oh yeah. Fire the Chad the mechanic. Yeah. Get rid of Ann and Fook Me and the DSJ um, and Helen Centrum. And also the stewardess. Yeah, get rid of the stu- Just We could just clean fucking house and start just over. Start over season if we 15. To, if we were to start over in season 15, it, 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 he's even in like a new podcast altogether. Oh, what, yeah. What, what could, would you do? What would I do? I would like to do one about would, professional I, wrestling. I, th- <laughs> I would think we would be vampire pilots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Vampire pilots. And we can only fly at night. Ooh. She so you to fly the night. Ah, dear Hall. Summary of the pilot. Revolves around Lewis the Labrador lecturing a group of neighborhood dogs on how to best spend their time alone. Hey. B plus, right? I mean... I, I mean, like, what... What more do you want? It's only... I, it's, I read it to you. Doctor it <clears throat> up. Make that an A. You make that an A. I, I think it's an A. I think it's great. That's a great summary. I, I, I think that since the pilot... You only fly! The pilot's only seven minutes and twenty five seconds long, and if if you say anything else in the summary, you'll give the whole thing away. Hmm? Give it away, give it away, give it away right now. now. So, would you improve on it? No, it's just you have to. Sometimes you have to live with being a B plus. Okay. Sometimes you just have to live with it. Sometimes you have to live with interesting facts. 
Interesting facts. Interesting facts. Conrad rule. Conrad rule is still in effect. I love you, Conrad. Conrad, you're a very nice boy. You're a very good boy, Conrad. Right now, I know you're probably tattooing someone's foot or their buttocks. If you tattoo them, Conrad, they can't be buried in the Jewish cemetery. Remember that. Kiss them on the forehead. Whoever you're tattooing right now, kiss them on the forehead. Mm, I love you. Interesting Facts is a part of the show where I dig a little deeper, I pull the curtain back, and you know the show. It's out there on the Classically Blue link. But here's something else. Here's, a little, here's other information you may not have known. I'm going to present it to you. An Easter egg. That's right. Yeah, something hidden. You Can- find it, you crack it open, what do you get? Oh, a little treasure. Right. This is canon right here. Mm-hmm. And it's candy right here. Delicious candy inside that Easter egg. <clears throat> and what I need from you folks at home is to listen to this, but not comment Dude. on it. Don't comment. Um, Don't even Cupid. No, no comment, no Cupid. No Tinder either. Um, just listen. Don't tell your friend, oh, that's interesting. Or don't think, like, like, look over your significant other. Oh, this is super interesting. Or don't even look, don't even look at your, like, whoever you're. Don't be an asshole. Don't be an asshole. Whoever you're sitting next to on the train in New York, don't, don't. It's, it's, look, guys. It's just for you. Just look, for you. Don't do it. All right? Don't do it, guys. <sighs> don't do just it. Don't just do don't it. do it. Just don't do it. The pilot aired on March 31st, 2002 Ooh. on Adult Swim, but what was not Adult. picked up. Adult. Swim, swim. Nation. This is, just, this is just 16 days after my birthday. Oh, happy birthday to Thank everybody. Thank you very much. Uh, it was not picked up for a full-time show. It was produced by Soup to Nuts, the animation studio behind shows like Dr. Cat's Professional Therapist. Oh, I thought I said The Rapist at first. There. <laughs> and uh, Home Movies. I never saw that one. But you don't, you've, you're aware of them. I'm aware of the Cats one, but not the... We talked about home movies on Saddle Rash. It had the same kind of squiggle vision style okay. of animation. Written and directed by Meryl Marco, best known as a writer for It's <clears throat> Gary Shanley Show and a writer for Late Night with David Letterman. This is a theme to Gary Show, looking the Gary Show. Gary called me up and asked if I would write a theme song. Theme song. I'm almost halfway finished. How do you like it so far? How do you like the theme to Gary, Gary Show? show? When I wrote that and the interesting facts, I thought of you immediately because I know you know the entire. Yeah, there's another verse. I know you know the whole thing, and but, I love that about but you. But it made it amazed you the first time I did it. It, it blew me away. Um, Meryl Marco also was married to David Letterman, I think, for a time. Oh, I, they they were like partners in crime. They, they started the Tonight Show together, or not the Tonight Show, but a late night show on the CBS. She may have even worked on his uh, his morning show that he had. I don't know. Anyway, um, she's kind of a. A big uh, deal. Uh, yeah, big deal. Thank you. Uh, stars Jack Black as Lewis. You may know him from School of Rock, Jumanji, Kung Fu Panda, and Tenacious D. Um, and also you might know him from the failed TV pilot where it was Heat him. Vision and also Jack. Heat Vision and Jack. Well done. High five that shit. Shh. Also stars Laura Keitlinger, stand-up comedian, producer for Will & Grace, Two Broke Girls, former cast member, and a crush of mine. Some There's some big people involved in this. Yeah, and not because Jack Black's fat. Just he's a like, huge fucking fat guy. Like just famous people when I yeah, say yeah. huge. Not big as far as girth, but as far as clout. Sure. Interesting facts over. Whew. Good job. Oh, merciful heavens! Um, Twitter, Twitter responses. Twitter responses. Twitter responses. I'm hoping Jason got some Twitter, Twitter responses. I did. Woo. Greetings from the Couch Pilots Podcast. We talk about TV shows that had one episode only. And next up for us is the Lewis Lectures. Lex. 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 The Lewis Lectures. We're excited to watch it. And we're wondering if you had any fun or interesting info you'd want to share. Thanks. Hope to hear from you soon. That's what we wrote. Oh, my God. And uh, I think the... Maybe not as far as like uh, celebrity goes, but involvement in the show. The biggest person that could have gotten back with us did, and that is Meryl Marco. Nice. She, she was the uh, the voice of the owner. She was the writer and director of this. Uh, so um, this obviously had a place in her heart. And I think time and time again, when it comes to Twitter responses, we found that people who had a lot invested sure. in it are the passion. ones who will the get passion, back to you, without a doubt. And hopefully, she's still listening. If she, if, if, if hopefully the the Fook me and. And, and fucking each other didn't make her want to turn it off. I can almost guarantee she's not listening. Okay, all right. Um, 
well, Meryl Marco says, I loved the Lewis lectures, and I had a million episodes I was excited to talk about all planned out. She had, she had oh. a million episodes ready to go. She, was, she loved it. She says, I hope you like it. I'm still sad it didn't go to, to the series. Plus, how about that theme by Mr. Pryboy? He was the guy who obviously did the theme song, and we'll talk about that in a moment. Uh, the pilot was made just as Time Warner bought AOL, Ugh. and that crisis hit. And so I responded to her. Um, this makes me so happy that you responded. You're a legend. Yes, the theme song was epic, and I rarely see them fleshed out in these pilots. I just watched it and enjoyed it. Uh, spoiler alert. Uh, you, you probably know more than most. Sometimes these pilots are just victims of bad timing. Thanks again. And that was it. That's great. But still, we got to hear from the person who created the Hell series. Yeah. That's pretty cool. And okay. Meryl Marco's cool as shit. Yeah. So thank you, Meryl Marco. We really appreciate it. And uh, something I appreciate almost as equally, and that's my good friends over at the Hyper Uppercut Podcast. Greetings, humans. We are interrupting your scheduled program to let you know of our plans for do- do- domination. Hyper Uppercut has not infiltrated your audio canals in the Fakakta to Comedy Network to penetrate your minds with lewd humor. Any attempts to stop our tr- tr- transmission of subpar video game news will result in immediate listening device failure, resulting in injury or possibly death from laughter or boredom. Join us at Hyper Uppercut. Cut, 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 what? Did you leave my mic off? Is it, do you not want me to talk the rest of the show? No, I just, I, I, I mushed the bush. Should we do a thing where only you do the... Uh, no. No? Okay. <clears throat> uh, there, that promo still mentions the Fakakta Comedy. <laughs> <laughs> do you talk to those guys at all? I haven't talked to Rob in a long time. I haven't talked to him either. We got, we got Rob! A- We're going to get a hold of you. Have him back on the plane. Hello, Rob. Look that guy. Cat lover. Oh, my God. His shirts. He always wears cat shirts, which is not necessarily... Uh, we got to get them involved with the Peoria Podcast Alliance. We haven't really done much of that. Yeah. Ah, so, all right, time to break down the pilot. There's not a lot of breakdown. You mentioned it before, but yes, yes, break folks. Break down. Go ahead and listen to me. It's only seven and a half minutes. This is a really short one. Yeah, I'm excited when we have a 12 minute pilot. Uh, we've had pilots as short as uh, three and a half minutes. Right. This is a this is still a very short pilot at seven sure. and a half minutes, and it starts like an opera, right? Yeah, uh, it, yeah. I felt like I was at, at Bro- in Broadway, even. Right? Yeah, it's a very theatrical, um, very very opera esque, and it's uh, it starts like an opera. It kind of sounds. It's basically the person singing about what it means to be a dog, what they do, all the cliches of of being and having a dog. Sure. And then um, after that well fleshed out intro. You have a, a dog, which turns out to be Lewis, the main character right. of the program. He's a black lab, and he's given a speech. A, a speech. Speech. He's given. He's given a speech at the park to a bunch of other dogs. Uh, fucking giving a speech. Hey guys, he's going to talk about. He's, he, he's and he's all about food and chewing. Right. That's you know in the in the what in else the is promo. there? What else is That's there? That's all there is in life, right? He's at a podium. He's talking to the dogs. He says, "How to maximize your time to use, use the, the facilities." facilities. Yeah. 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 Um, and he's got an easel on one side with like a pad of paper, mm-hmm. but he also has one of those TV VCR combos. Yeah, well, on those old AV carts. Yeah. So it looks like he's outside uh, giving this speech. It's a park, I would think. Yeah, right? in, in front of I don't know, fifteen dogs, ten. Oh 15 yeah, dogs. At, 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 on a on a on an average day. What a great day it is! And when the owner leaves, um, he says, "Welcome them back every time." So he keeps he keeps talking to the crowd, but referring to his video. Right, he is talking. He's he's breaking the fourth wall. He's talking to the camera, and he's like, y- y- the, "The unexpected returns." They think they're leaving, but they're not. Sometimes they're, they'll come back three, four times because right. they forget things and or forgot to. Every do Every time they come back, app act as happy as fuck. Mm-hmm. Right, just act like you haven't seen him in hours. Stay in their good favor for sure, and say once the owner is gone, it's time to enact your plan. And uh, and and then here I think they say something about like they're like doing something with they're like creating tapes to sell right right they're he filming think, this yeah, and they're yeah. creating so because he's he, he's got a a dog friend that lives there with him and hey dog dog oh, God, what's the name of that dog I wrote it down I thought um, I Kibby, can, oh, Kibby or something I, I don't can, know I can pull it up here um, but uh, he's talking to this dog this dog doesn't give a fuck what's going on. He's no. hyper, but he, she's like, what are, you, what are you doing? Why are you making these videos? He's like, well, I'm going to sell them. It's like training videos, right, for dogs. 
Yeah, it's it's basically how to get the most out of your life and your owner as, as an animal. Right. As an animal. First thing you need to do when they when they leave and you know they're not coming back is you go lay on everything, every surface. Yeah. Completely lay on it, and he goes to the couch. He goes all over the place. Right. Winky. Winky. There's the owner, Winky, and Lewis, and those are really only the only characters in the show. And they say now it's time to lay on things. Mm-hmm. You lay on your side. You stretch your legs all the way out. And he's doing it and explaining in the fashion of like an exercise. Sure, video. yeah. To him, it's yeah, it's an exercise. To it's him. fitness. Yeah, my dog does that every time I come home from work. She she gets on the couch Ooh. and she lays around. Then she, she you know she not lays but she scoots everywhere. Sure. And then she goes in the bedroom and gets all over in the pillows and hell, stuff. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. And it says then it's time for security patrol. Yeah, uh, you're you're in charge of a two and a half mile radius around your food bowl. Yep. So he goes to the window. And he's like, ah, ah, he hears fire trucks. He's like, damn, fire trucks. You know, I told you not to come around here. Basically, all the, every cliche for an animal, or for a dog at mm-hmm. least, it, it is touched on. Yeah, it, and, and the dog is almost acting like <clears throat> it's, it, a, it's, it's playing the human for these things. When, in fact, like the dog is doing nothing sure. and getting nothing accomplished. But he's building itself up like, this is what we do. This is right. how we become successful this is our animals. Job. Yeah. It reminds me of the training videos uh, when I when I my first job at McDonald's. Really? And we had to watch training videos. I mean, they were saying nothing, but they were so excited about it. <laughs> I would kill to see those. Uh, and I mean, I would kill somebody to see those videos. The um, the other dog, Winky, like we mentioned, is, is smaller. And like you said, just not impressed with anything. Sure. Making kind of smart-ass remarks. Looking uh, kind of deadpan at the camera. Which like, is kind of like the, 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 the complete opposite of... Of Lewis, he, she's like laid back. She doesn't yep. really care. You know, she's not high maintenance. Whereas he is high maintenance and, and all overly excited. He says, "Now you know what? Now it's time to go to the food chamber, which is the refrigerator." Right, and he he just rams into it with his body and it opens up. I've I have ne- I, you know what? I'm going to try it when I get home tonight and just see if that works. But I've never opened. Don't the lead door. with your shoulder. No, you don't think so. No, no. Well, he does open it, and he begins to make a real mess, just digging his snout in there and pulling everything out and just trying to eat whatever he can. Yeah, and so then he's like, well, i got to share this, right, with... Winky? And, the human? You know, she, no, his his girlfriend. Oh, yes, he said he's seeing someone lately. Right, and it ends up being the couch, and he pushes yes. the couch into the living room, and he's talking Into all, the kitchen. Yeah, into the kitchen. He's talking all seductive to it, and then just smears food on it. Yeah, that that's his way to uh, show love. You know what? I, you know what? And, I've and, never done that in the bedroom. I've never had a lady smear food on me or vice versa. No, I think. I, there, food is no place for the bedroom during sex. I like that very much. High five that uh, shit. <laughs> um, uh, the couch's name is Rose, and as he's pushing her in, he's like, "Have you have you put on a little a few pounds lately?" And making a, you know a weight yeah. jump to the couch, and then he apologizes for it. Um, he also says you need to dump trash everywhere. And he, he still is talking like sexy to the couch and like offers the couch some of the trash. He's making a real mess. And this cartoon solidifies why I have no pets. Yeah, yeah. I could not stand for this. This for is not far fetched. This all this stuff does happen as a, it, it might not all happen on the same day, but it does happen as a pet owner. If I had a dog and it did that, <clears> I would <throat> I would pick it up by the scruff of his neck, I'd take him out back, and I would field goal kick it into the woods. Yeah, I know you would. I, I can't stand for that. That's why I, if you ever even said, I'm getting a dog, I, I would call the Humane Society and say, this yeah. is not going to work out. <laughs> yeah, they want like, I, I had a friend of mine who had to write down references, and they called me and asked me if he'd be a good uh, owner. And uh, so obviously I would not write down you because you would, you would oh, say, no, he'd uh, kill yeah. the dog in an instant. Uh, so the owner comes home, and he's like, this is what you do. And so he, the owner comes home and is freaking out because of all the stuff that's gone on and all the mess. And uh, the dog makes it seem like uh, somebody broke in and did all this stuff. Mm-hmm. He goes, you can only use it a couple of times. After a couple of times, it doesn't work anymore. Yeah. Yeah. So that happens, and then that's the last thing that happens because it's only seven and a half sure. minutes, and it's over. But within seven and a half minutes, is there turbulence? Please remain seated as we are now crossing a zone of turbulence. This is – I think this is the – very early days, 2002. This is the very early days of Adult Swim. I think Adult. Adult. Swim. I think the beginning. I think this is the beginning. And in the beginning, there wasn't very much. There was Aqua Teen Hunger Force, Space Ghost, Sea Lab, and Home Movies. Okay. I genuinely think those are the four programs they had that rounded out Adult Swim. There may be something else that I'm missing, but I think that's it. This did not cut the mustard for that lineup. They decided not to move forward with this. Uh, and that's interesting to me because... 
they're probably hurt for content trying to create this sure. new block of adult entertainment right. at the end of You'd the think night. You think you would suck up whatever was remotely decent. Right. So what's the problem here? Is there something what what's what didn't work about this show? Well, I think and I, I'm I'm speculating, Jason. I speculate from time to time because that's I, all you can do, right? Um, Adult Swim wanted to be edgy, right? They wanted to be the bad boys of cartoon, right? Yeah, and this wasn't edgy. There was no cursing involved. There was there was no inappropriate jokes for the most part, right? Okay, it was just to me it was it was just not wholesome, but it was just it was. It wasn't what when you say an Adult Swim cartoon because we watch a lot of them. We have. Um, I would say it wouldn't fit in that regime because they're, they're edgy. It's not absurd enough. Hmm. I totally get that. I think that's probably about right. Um, yeah. This this is. There's nothing racy. There's no curse words in this. It's not sexual. Sure. This there's seems not like there's not like. Pun joke after pun joke after pun joke. Right. It, it, it may not fit there, but it could fit somewhere, I think. This is something that could fit on Saturday morning cartoons. Yeah. In between spot in between show you know, in between cartoons. And the and thankfully in two thousand two Saturday morning cartoons were still a thing. Yeah. It's not anymore. R R I P. But uh yeah, you're right. This this would not fit in in that in Or that on, on, on 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 Animal Planet. Yeah. This is perfect for Animal Planet. Oh, you know would be great for Animal Planet? Do this in like 60-second chunks during yeah. the commercials. Yeah. Intros and outros yeah. to things and just throw in, hey, you know what? There's Lewis always causing trouble as a puppy. He's sure. on the Animal Planet. What's Lewis going to do next, huh? And then you turn into uh, greeting cards, right? Nice. And then uh, books, like kids' books. And then Hallmark Christmas decorations. Right. And then um, like you could uh, have a line of like coffins. Oh, a whole line of Lewis coffins? Oh, that'd be great. Yeah. And Band-Aids? Oh, Lewis Band-Aids. Oh, and then, like, Will Smith could do the voice for, like, a Lewis Lecture movie. And then um, you could have uh, Chew Toys. Oh, Lewis yeah, le- yeah, yeah. Le- Lewis the Lecture dog Chewy Toys. And then, yeah, maybe, like, Courtney Cox could do some commercials for some Lewis brand coffins. Yeah. Well, this would be back good. then, t- there was no Courtney Cox back in 2002. You know, I did not even think about that. Thanks right. for letting me know. I'll let it go. I'll let uh, it go. I'll let, let it go. go. Where would you like to see this go if it continued? I, I, I think I hit it on the head. Yeah. Animal Planet. Yeah. Um, Saturday morning cartoons. It's it's lovable. Kids love puppies. They love little doggies, and they want to see them acting goofy. Why do you think people watch the Puppy Bowl? That's right. This is a cartoon version, like a, a like a like a scaled back Puppy Bowl, right? How much? What kind of mischief is going to get into? Or the Bud Bowl? Oh, no. Not like that. No, no. Okay, that's for adult. Adult, no. adults. But you love that song, don't you? Ladies and gentlemen, as we start our descent, please make sure your seat backs and tray tables are in their full upright position. IMDb has a score. Do you tear? Do you tear to take a stab at it, um, or do you care to take a stab at it? Six point five. It is a four point seven, and this is from twelve ratings. Um, just over twice the amount of ratings necessary to generate an average. Um, other than that, no one's talking about this. Yeah. I couldn't find a user review. I couldn't find a viewer review. I couldn't find a critic review. No one is out there talking about the Lewis Lectures. No one has taken the time out of their schedule to watch a seven-minute pilot right. and then write about it. It had some good names in it. I'm not a fan of Jack Black, but he's a big name. Oh, do you, don't like, you don't like Tenacious D? No, I don't. Okay. <laughs> I like him. I know. Um, I know. And I, and I love Laura. Ke- I put Laura Keitlinger up there with like Amy Sedaris. I love. Oh, they're nice. they're, they're older comedy broads. I just, I love them. I love older comedy broads. Anyway, um, no one's talking about these. You and I are talking about them. And I think that's it's our I, duty. I, honestly, there's a podcast about everything. I really doubt anyone has done a podcast about the Lewis lectures. What do you think? I'm, I think you're right. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to FCI Airport. Local time is 11-11 and the temperature is 69 degrees. For your safety and comfort, please remain seated with your seatbelt fastened until the captains turn off the fastened seatbelt sign. We are trailblazers who don't get enough credit for what they do. I think that's pretty safe to say. And something else that's safe to say is that you and I will now rate this pilot. 
we gave you the interesting facts. We talked we talked to the creator, right? We put you back in that mindset. We did the banter. People wanted the banter. We gave them the banter. Oh, we gave it in droves. Oh my gosh. We un- we unleashed a storyline. We I mean we we completed a storyline to be mm-hmm. honest with you. Yeah, that's what we did. We completed a storyline. <laughs> we we, we, uh, we we arced it. Yeah. And we, now it's canon. And now it's canon. We did the summary. All right. We did the movie quote from Highlander. We did all those things to build up to this moment. Captain, the most important moment of the show. I think I think that's fair to say. Yeah. So we take a look at the scale. It's a one to seven scale taken from the television show from the nineteen ad nineties called Wings. We look at all the characters, we assign them numerical numbers, and we put them in order from least good to best good. And that's Roy Biggins, a number He's one, a, thumbs down, pfft, all the way, mm-hmm. shithead. Um, up to a number seven, a thumbs up, pfft, Brian Hackett, baby. Hell yeah, Captain Philip Russisher. As I so often have in the past, I turn to you, how do you rate the Lewis Lectures? I had two ratings for this. and I'm Both gla- from you? Yeah. And I'm glad that we touched upon uh, something in the turbulence section. Turbulence. Which, which helped me. Am I going to rate this as an adult swim cartoon? Or am I going to rate this as a cartoon within itself? Mm-hmm. If it's an Adult Swim cartoon, it's a three because it doesn't fit the genre. That's not what this is about, right? So I am giving this as Lewis, the Lewis lecture. I'm giving it a, a, a five. I, five. It was good. Give it, it a was, five. It was cute. It was. I, I'm a pen owner. Mm-hmm. I I've been through all this. I liked it. Yeah. It was only seven minutes long. You didn't have to drag on forever. It was nice. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go one lower. I'm going to say this is a four. Okay. Th- yeah, this is not good for Adult Swim. Adult. Adult. Education. Oh, yeah. This wouldn't fit there. there it's, there's no place for it on the, the late night Cartoon Network. But there, I think this can exist in some form. Back in 2002, there weren't a ton of avenues. Online wasn't booming like it is now with streaming services and sites where you could just go and watch videos. Anytime. This is pre-YouTube, Animal right? Planet. Or PBS. PBS even. This almost could PBS be on... PBS even. PBS even. It could almost be on PBS. Right? It's in between stage PBS even. In between Arnold and... Um... Sesame Street? Yeah. Uh, yeah, that that could be good. Yeah, I think you're right. There, there, this could almost turn into a kid show because, like we said, it wasn't racy. It didn't have any bad words. Sure. I was thinking like Fox, um, kind of how they had you know King of the Hill, uh, The Simpsons. They they really try a lot in the late '90s, early 2000s with different. They they like the critic. I don't know if you remember that, but yeah. they, they tried yeah. a lot with different animation. This could fit there, but I think you're right. Maybe even more so a PBS sure. because the animation. We didn't really get into that too much, but it's not super detailed. It didn't look terribly expensive. Watercolors? Yes. That would f- I think I think yeah. you're right. I think PBS is it. In 2002, it's PBS. Sure. Um I didn't find it particularly engaging as far as the story goes. I mean, you can only do so much with 7 minutes. Sure. Uh but you have good talent. Yeah, you, you have to you have to set up Lewis as a as a as a dog. Like yeah. hey, what's his character? What is what is he like? Maybe this is not the best uh, option for a first episode. Maybe it is. I don't know. May- maybe it's not about a series of lectures he give. How how many how much could a dog really give out to people? These could be good characters, lovable characters, but maybe in a different format. Maybe not about a series of lectures. Maybe that could be part of it. Just his it, just following him in his life and he's just talking to the screen like somebody in Philadelphia. Right? Sure. I don't think that's part of that show, know. but yeah. I never saw it. Um but this is not bad. It's not great. It could be better. They could they could tweak it a little bit. Um, and with that, and my your score of a five and mine of a four, we close the book on the Lewis lectures, and we will never talk about that show again. Maybe not. But join us next time, won't you please, when we watch the pilot episode of That Crooked Sip. Here's a little something to wet your whistle. Centers around the white dysfunctional Beau, dysfunctional Beauregard family who embody the spirit of the Old South. You can find the entire episode of That Crooked Sip by subscribing to Couch Pilots and Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcast app of choice, and then simply click on one of our classically both links in our show notes. Or download the app for Daily Motion and check out all of that commotion. Or go to YouTube, and you know what to do, Tube. I have a feeling that's what you did, <laughs> because you said that. I don't endorse that. There's no classically blue link that would say otherwise. Depends on which one I put on that. So. Uh, you know, it's just this is what I want from you. In a few weeks from now, when you boot up your laptop again, 
Go ahead and tell me about all the viruses you have because you didn't click on one that's of our true. classically that's blue links that's been I'm a galvanized daredevil. by the Pachinko Sometimes machine. Sometimes I'm a daredevil. <sighs> Sometimes people want to contact us. Yeah. I mean, we didn't do any fan feedback on this episode, but we will have some for the next episode. We had a pretty jam-packed show oh, yeah. today. Um, <clears throat> we, had to be, we had to go cannon. Um, you can go on our Facebook page, uh, Couch Pilots Podcast, um, on our Twitter, which it's is... It's a website, folks, okay? Nobody uses it anymore, but it's there. It's a website. Um, go to CouchPilotsPodcast.com. Yeah, that's a website, kids. That's the one that, that we work the hardest beep, on. Beep, boop, boop, beep. Uh, has all the links, all the social medias. You can listen to any episode there. Um, also, check out our Patreon at Patreon.com slash CouchPilots. I mean, people that, when you mentioned it earlier, I think they might have thought it right. was a joke. <laughs> But there is a real, rightfully so. There's a real Patreon page. Yeah, do you like what we do? Tell us uh, by contacting us, and maybe tell us with a few bucks if you want. It does. Uh, it costs us money to do what we do. We provide this for free. And if you like what we're doing, then maybe throw us a few shekels. Help us keep the lights on. No one's walking out of here with gold plated diapers. No, right. And also, I mean, there are there are uh, a lot of tiers that you can get rewards. So we're we're, we're actually giving Wee. we're actually Wee. giving those kind of tiers. Tears in heaven. Just kind of tears, buddy. Because Eric Clapton threw his kid off a balcony. <laughs> Fucking asshole. It went from an accident in the balcony collapsing to him picking up his child and throwing him off Yeah, it? he's on cocaine. He threw him off the balcony. Oh, boy. What's that song about cocaine he did? Cocaine? Yeah, that's it. If you want to get down oh. and throw your kid <laughs> on the ground, <laughs> cocaine. He don't like, he don't like, he don't like when day does cocaine. Fuck that guy, right? Throw your kid on the ground. <laughs> cocaine. Coca- cocaine. Cocaine. Um, and we also, most importantly, we have a dial-in number. Uh, we will play your uh, voicemails on the show. Um, it's 1-910-PILOTS-1, which if you do the calculations, beep, boop, beep, boop, yep. it ends up being 910. Yep. And the word, the letters, the numbers you're going to give him. Oh, me? Yeah, yeah. I this, thought you were said. Why well, did all the contact information accept this part? Uh, I'm sorry. It's 910-745-6871. That's 910-PILOTS-1. Call us anytime you want. Say, say Okay, last night, I wo- something woke me up in the middle of the night last night. About, uh, it was about 5 a.m. So not maybe not the middle of the night. But about, I, was, I was getting up to go to work. About an hour before I was going to get up. Something woke me up. At that time, I could have just said, you know sure. what? Call Couch Pilots. Leave them a voicemail, right? When you wake up. Mm-mm-mm. And you know it's gonna be, it's gonna be a couch pilots kind of day. And I would call couch pilots number, and, and I, I would call five thousand times. Set it, though. Nine, ten pilots, one. Do you have a message of positivity for the folks today? Not a fucking thing. Really? I about lost my shit yesterday. Uh, Jason was nowhere around. Um, I managed to pull myself together, uh, but uh, we're going to make it through a day. Is that something we can talk about in the next show, or is this a nope. uh, IBWIP 300 kind of episode? <laughs> no, we're not talking about it, uh, but uh, but you know what you do? Okay, here's positivity, guys. Here we go, here we go. Things might be rough in your life. It might look like nothing is going right, but God damn it, you'll, 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 you, 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 you don't sit in the shit. Walk with the shit. Get out of the shit. Wake up, and there's a new day. Just try a new day. Just like, try to get I feel like there day. are two or three WWE references in there. Really? Walk with the shit <laughs> and new day. You know what? Huh? Bootios. That's what I got to say. Well, this pilot may have been rough. That's what I always say. But, but it's, it's always a smooth flight here on Couch Pilots. Me love you long time. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you next time. On behalf of Couch Pilots and the entire crew, we'd like to thank you for joining us on this trip, and we are looking forward to seeing you on board again in the near future. Have a nice day!